Hey guys, so I thought I might try out something a little bit different today. Today I'm going to be checking out Windows 10. Now, as you guys of course know, this is primarily a Linux channel, but it's always good to see what's going on the other side of the fence. Now, I've not really had that much of a time to poke around the operating system. I've just adjusted a few settings and installed it to a virtual machine, and most of this video is going to be done blind, so we can have a bit of a wander through the new Windows 10 interface and see together whether or not it's actually worth a damn. So, uh, let's start off with the settings that I've already had a bit of a tinker around with, and those are the visual settings. So you can right click, go to personalize, uh, pretty much the same as Windows 8.1. And it's interesting in the sense that you can um, select a, like a, a, a background image and then it adjusts the colors of the theme to match that, which is, that's all pretty cool. So I kind of like the nice sort of teal thing we've got going on there. As you can see, already installed Google Chrome. That almost was like an instinctive reaction. But let's not, let's go to Microsoft Edge. Let's have a look at Microsoft Edge. See what that's all about. So we can search the web. Um, or we've got today's Microsoft Edge tip. Write, draw, type on the re web, markup recipes. Redditch, Worcestershire. That is not where I live. <laughs> but it, it never gets where I live because I, 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 I doubt it sort of gets registered out anyway. Uh, William Shatner writing book in honor of Leonard Nimoy. So these are the news stories. I don't even know why I'm looking at this sort of front page. Oh, right, it's the MSN news feed. Um, so it looks reasonably like sort of like the natural iteration of what Internet Explorer might be, I guess. I I, I don't know. I don't see anything there that's particularly going to wow me. And to be honest, to give a decent run for a for a web browser is most likely going to take more time than this allows. We have the store here now. I don't have a Microsoft account. Surprise, surprise. So it'd be interesting to see how far I get with this. Okay, so it has apps for your desktop. Now, I think this might have been a thing in Windows 8.1, but to be honest, it's never really anything that I, I ventured into. So, top free apps. Let's have a look at the top free apps. Adobe Photoshop Express. That's interesting. I, I, I'm assuming that's like a trial. You got Netflix there. Obviously, Netflix isn't free, but I'd imagine that the sort of the op the um, the app is uh, Skype Wi-Fi. Line, have no idea what that is. eBay. So let's have a look at an app. Let's put in. Let's put. Let's put in VLC. VLC is a good piece of kit. So this is actually not massively dissimilar to the Ubuntu App Store. This is the kind of the vibe I'm getting. I don't have a Microsoft account, so am I not able to actually get the apps there? Choose an account. Now that is interesting. And again, these are one of the. Um, no account. Uh, hmm. Okay. First disappointment. You need um, in order to get to use the app store, you need a like a Microsoft account. Um, can't say I'm particularly happy about that, but neither am I surprised because it's just another set of terms and conditions. I mean, what if you buy uh, Windows 10 on the terms and conditions of of Windows 10 and then realize, oh, hang on a minute, there's a whole other privacy policy that I've got to agree to further on down the line. Again, something that I'm not particularly uh, fond of, um, and I've noticed a number of companies sort of doing this. So the menu, the menu, this is what a lot of people have been talking about. So it comes with a lot of apps that you can't actually get rid of. Um, you can't sort of, for example, get rid of this. What happens if you just did small? You could do If you did everything as small, this wouldn't actually be that bad. Nope, I didn't want to pin that to the test bar. I wanted to resize it. So you'd actually have a decent set of quick launch icons, I guess it would be. You could just make it all small. Because this is making a great video, isn't it? Making all my icons small. I just want to see whether or not this would... I don't even know what's going on here. If we make everything small, because I don't understand, maybe the big the side the big squares is really for um, tablets, touch screens, whatever. So if we just do yeah, resize them all to small. Hmm. Yeah, and then you've got a whole bunch. I don't know, bunch of click. Hmm. And you could have just like, yeah, columns. I don't know, that's not bad, actually. That's, so you get to rearrange your own start menu in a reasonably interesting way, actually. Because 
very few people use more than, shall we say, 12, 12 applications. That's about as much as, as anyone really uses on a regular basis. Um, so you, you really only need space for about 12 quick launch icons. This gives you the whole shebang. Um, and then you can arrange them. So you're, you're like 20 or so most commonly used programs could be sort of run down there at the side. So um, as far as menus go, you know, this is sort of looking at, you can go to all apps here and this arranges them in, can you, can I type in? So I can't type in, what does the Windows button do? So it brings up the menu and I want to, if I want a calculator, calculator, California lottery, so it searches the web. So yeah, it searches the web as part when when you just press Windows key and search the web. There is um some very controversial privacy policy stuff surrounding that. I'll do that maybe in another video. Um, what else we got here? Updates were installed. Yada yada yada. So we can switch to cat tablet mode, quiet hours, all that kind of stuff. Um, network internet access. OneDrive not signed in. So it comes with OneDrive. OneDrive is like an integral part of the system. OneDrive is Microsoft's version of like Dropbox or Google Drive, whatever. It's uh, again, something that I again wouldn't use not being the biggest Microsoft fan, but of course you often find yourself having to use Microsoft products anyway, because they just have that massive stranglehold of a grip um, on the market. Um, so we can clean up the taskbar a little bit. Um, so since I installed Google Chrome, directly from the website. I'm going to install VLC from the website. And this is from, uh, this is using Edge. Named after, of course, the, uh, is it YouTube guitarist or bass guitarist? Edge. Yeah, how about that? Fancy having a browser named after you. Cool. All right, well, that seems to install pretty sort of straightforwardly, I guess, just working away, working along its merry way. GNU General Public License version two, good old VLC, good for that. Excellent, all right, so this is, yeah, installing a program is pretty much the same if you're not doing it on the App Store. Um, let's have a look at some of the task bar um, adjustments. What I mean by that is, at the moment, I've got, small small buttons on. So this is like the full size, the big task bar. Obviously the big difference that you notice. Okay, so we've got VLC. Let's have, let's have a look at how an, uh, sort of a non-native app looks. Yeah, that, that's VLC under sort of the old, the well-known sort of interface. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and then the edge there sort of is again, not minimized, it's just sort of switched into like the dock. Task view. So that's that's basically alt tabbing, isn't it? Button for alt tab. So here we have, this is Cortana, I think uh, it or she is called. Um, so this is where you can search the web and windows immediately. Here are some things you can do. I can remind you to do something at a particular time place or both. Uh, you can use your voice to give me tasks, dictate messages or chat. I'll help you find stuff on your device. So this is basically Microsoft Jarvis, uh, if you guys are ever familiar with, with Iron Man. And again, this is asking for a lot of information based on a privacy policy, which a lot of people, uh, namely you guys as well, have expressed in, in the comment section of previous videos. Um, so it's um, certainly not, um, not pulling any punches with the with with it quote unquote trying to help you, um, again a lot of these I find to be gimmicks. I never find these like these are not integral useful tools as part of an operating system. An operating system allows you to do these things. You then install software on top of that. You know that is what a, an operating system is designed to do. It's designed to shuffle programs and organize them so that they're useful to you. This is sort of integra integrating. I would say just too much into the the UI and too much into the operating system. Um, Cortana can give you suggestions on alerts for more to search online for. Re oh, so you can turn that off at least. Um, other privacy. Let's have, okay. Let's have a look at the privacy settings. Let apps use my advertising ID. So you have you know an attributed ID which has all your advertising things. Let websites provide locally relevant content by accessing my language list. 
So we'll turn off all of these things. Location. Location's turned off. Um, camera will not be able to be used because it's using on the host operating system. So you can actually just turn off. Uh, that actually is not bad. Account info, which, yeah, contacts, no. So you can turn, at least this gives you, at least this gives you a decent menu where you can turn all this fluff off. So I don't want apps accessing this. I don't want apps. The thing is, of course, the big problem when it comes to privacy is a lot of people, you know, aren't going to instinctively look to see what their um, what their options are. Windows should ask for my feedback. Never. Send your data to Microsoft. Oh, basic enhanced full. Your device data. Basic. You can you know that I'm running a virtual machine, and then background apps. Off 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 and if this is a little bit staggery a little bit slow um it's because i am running in a virtual machine this is not a computer that's actually running this operating system. well it is but it's not um so the actual response time and the the snappiness generally speaking isn't a decent reflection on the operating system itself that being said when i do run lightweight um operating systems they are snappier so we do not let these apps run in the background so that i like actually that is something that I really do like is that just you have a whole privacy and you know you, you get to control all of these settings of course on Linux based operating systems you know this doesn't really seem, sort of come up that often um, I say Linux based operating system I think Android do, does actually have something so anyway there we go we set up our privacy settings which are, I got to admit significantly better than I thought it would be so let's give Cortina okay so remind me can I do that Remind me to pick up milk. Okay, that's not how Cortana works. Um, what can I find? Can I find um, what if I wanted? What if I wanted Joel Bauer? How do you spell it? That's not how you spell Joel Bauer. So this is not in, uh, doing the web either. So. Uh, this is not that's not searching the web, which is far, uh, which is because I just turned that off. Um, so what have we got here then? File Explorer, yeah. So I think I've pretty much had a bit of a basic rundown on on what sort of the basic sort of day to day. Turn on Windows Smart Screen, sod off. Updates were installed, sod off. All settings. What other settings have we got? Wi-Fi, ease of use. That seems a little bit basic a little bit more straightforward accounts um i think that it's a, I, i'm not okay um so that's about that's about the sort of the aesthetics of it that's the settings that's the apps um unfortunately of course i'm sorry that we didn't get to check out the app store but i'm not going to be creating a windows account just for the sake of, of a video i'm sure you know what to expect and it's not like you can't install apps through other means it's in fact that's probably what i'd prefer to do because it just keeps you a little bit more in control so uh, as a brief overview from a sort of a blind poking around uh, to, uh, uh on windows 10 what do i think of it uh, i gotta admit that menu is definitely an improvement it's an improvement because you can just select a few shortcuts to your your most commonly used programs you got recently added, most used. All right, you know that's 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 actually a reasonably decent panel. Um, to be honest, that, that's probably the best panel that they've they've actually had. Gives you a lot of customized uh, options, but I do feel that it locks into the internet just a little bit too, a little bit too much, far too much. Like an operating system should be just as valuable offline as it is online in reality. It should, uh, um, you know, it shouldn't have to sort of touch base every now and then. It shouldn't rely on you know, an external server for some basic functionality to work. And, you know, a, an operating system fundamentally should be significantly more independent of the internet than I think this is. So in terms of UI, definite improvement, definite improvement. Uh, I got to say, it's maybe not the best looking Windows that I've ever seen. I know that's obviously very subjective, but, um, and you do have a little bit more control over the themes. I only gave you a bit of a brief overview on, on, on those. Um, you can actually select your own color taskbar or whatever. I've just chosen that my taskbar corresponds with my, my desktop background. Um, I'm not really going to check out Cortana again. It's one of those gimmicks that I just don't... You know, it, it, in fact... Okay, let's, let's actually have a look at Cortana, I think. 
Okay, so Katana can give you suggestions, ideas, reminders, and alerts. Okay, so let's turn on Katana. Cortana. And then, oh, here we go. Another privacy statement we've got to agree to. So, to let Cortana do her best work, Microsoft collects and uses information including your uh, including your location and location history, contacts, voice input, searching history, calendar details, content and communication history from messages and apps, and other information on your device. In Microsoft Edge, Cortana collects and uses your browsing history. You can always tinker with what Cortana remembers in the notebook, disable Cortana in Microsoft Edge, or turn Cortana off entirely. To help out, I need speech inking and typing personalization to be on. Can I turn it on now? Good. What would you like me to call you? Chris. To help out, I need to use your location. Yeah, don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Okay, so, all in all... Cortana, I think, is perhaps a little bit invasive on that side of things. I'm not going to go down the Cortana route. Maybe if there's enough demand for it, I might um, do a separate video. Uh, but on the surface, i got to say that, that that is a gimmick that I don't really want anything to do with. You're paying a lot of personal information for what is effectively a gimmick or a convenience, and that is something that I cannot condone. Um, but all in all, aesthetically, an improvement. Functionally, the same. Maybe a little, you know, like... You you know, if you've got Windows 8.1 and have no desire to upgrade, don't. Same with Windows 8. Hell, same with Windows 7, really. Um, and I, and it is significantly more integrated with the internet. Um, I actually managed to install the um, OS without actually having a Microsoft account, which is a big point in its favor. Windows 8.1, you can do that, but you have to sort of go into, like, um, was it custom settings or whatever to install it without signing up to a Microsoft account. That is something that I always, like, want to reserve my right to to not actually have to sign up to your online account to use your operating system. Um, and yeah, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Microsoft. I am coming at this from a very cynical viewpoint, but I still feel that that cynical viewpoint is somewhat justified, especially in regards to Katana. But other than that, it doesn't seem to really be offering that much more than a slight UI improvement, which you could sort of get anywhere from like, uh, if you just check out Classic Shell. Classic Shell basically gives you a chance to customize your Windows Shell. Um, ClassicShell.net. This website's great. Uh, Classic Shell, free software that improves your productivity, enhances. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, so it uh, so it's, it's even allegedly supported on Windows 10 as well, which gives you the old school kind of UI with your start menu, uh, with with a lot less gimmicks and a lot less kind of stuff on it as well, um, which is something that I. Although I haven't tested on Windows 10, I certainly would recommend for Windows 8.1 and other previous versions of Windows. It gives you a significantly more customizable start menu and start bar. So, uh, all in all, like I say, somewhat UI improvement. Added a whole load of gimmicks that I don't really want, but it, uh, on the plus side, it gives you the option to turn them off. Um, it's not going to. I'm not going to be upgrading my Windows partition to Windows 10, um, primarily based on the privacy policy that they have. Um, and even when we just quickly had a look at Katana, it gave you a little bit of an insight into the amount of information it wants from you, which, in effectively, what it's going to give you in return is is a gimmick. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.